As soon as videotape left the factory, it already started to break down. Information that is on the tapes is slowly dying, and if we don't preserve them, important historical content that's contained on them will be lost forever. What is MePOPS? What is MePOPS? What is MePOPS? MePOPS stands for Moving Image Preservation of Puget Sound. What MePOPS does for the general public of the Pacific Northwest is provide access to digitized content. Our mission is to raise awareness about the magnetic media crisis, the alarm that the Association of Moving Image Archivists sounded to sort of bring awareness to the urgency of digitizing videotape. Audiovisual Archive in Australia has put a deadline of 2025 to say if you don't have your magnetic material digitized by this time, you're, you're screwed. They're figuring out the actual date and it's right around the corner. Within 20 to 30 years of the time it's created, it's, it's disintegrating. The magnetic media crisis is sometimes called a gathering storm because the deterioration of the actual analog videotapes and then the increasing obsolescence and rarity of the players that play them back. So video is a little bit different from film in that video went through all these different iterations, all these different formats for consumer purposes, for broadcast purposes, whereas film, there were consumer formats, 616 millimeter, 8, 8 millimeter, but the principle of film has stayed pretty consistent and video requires all these different players. A lot of the formats that we work with stopped being manufactured years ago. And so we have to make sure that we take good care of them and tune them up, clean them, because a lot of the parts and players are getting harder and harder to come by, and so are the people who actually work on them. They're a dying breed, if you will. In some cases, people thought they were creating preservation copies by putting um, film onto videotape. In fact, that was that was not a great a great a great idea. Film is actually quite stable. The thing about older media types like film and negatives is that they are stable. Thirty years from now, you're going to be able to view them. Hundred year old nitrate film, in some cases, is still around and looks gorgeous. Rosie Video, for its manufacture, had a completely different different purpose. It was more of a kind of uh, democratizing um, format for shooting. It was a lot cheaper than film, so not only were professionals using it, but also amateurs and just the average person was able to buy videotape and record. There was plenty of access. You could watch your, your VHS tape of a film, but now that VHS tape needs a lot of help. We have to keep up. We can't just sort of settle back and say, okay, we're finished. Despite the fact that we're working with old materials that have their fixed content, the way we view that material, the way we store that material is going to just keep changing and evolving. A lot of the time, videotape is capturing real people doing real things. That might sound personal and boring, but it really encompasses so much of Seattle and Seattle's history that it's valuable to the general public and great for them to be able to access it. The public is able to see files digitized at MePOPS on Internet Archive where we create collections for each group so that they can, based on that institution, go in and view the content on their personal computer.
The bees tried everything. They would hang their hives high up in the trees. They would hide them in the bushes. They built inside holes or on the ground, but nothing worked. One fall, after all the flowers had gone, the queen bee held a meeting. <clears throat> My fellow Amawak, it is almost winter and we are in trouble. What shall we do, your majesty? What shall we do? And one young bee spoke up. Uh, your majesty, mm, there's someone who might help us. I've heard many stories about his power and kindness. Who is this wonderful creature? His name is Wasaki Jack. He calls all creatures Nizimuk, his little brothers and sisters. He might help us protect our honey. Well, it's the best idea we've had so far. Let's give it a try. Let us go and visit this Wasaki Jack. Everyone loves our honey, especially that terrible bear, Moskwa. Well, tell me, why is that a problem, little sister? And so the Queen Amo told Wisaki Chak how they needed their honey as food so they could survive the winter. How other animals and birds would steal the honey over and over again. Because you are good workers, and because you work hard to help each other, I wish to give you something. But what is it? What is it? <laughs> Come here, young bee. Try this on. He passed his hand over the young bee. Now, the young bee carried a sharp little stinger at the end of his body. What's that? That is a weapon to use against those honey thieves. But it's so small. Ah, true, but there are many of you. And he waved his hand over all of them. And now all the bees had stingers. Now, you will be able to protect your honey and yourselves. This time, Musqua had a surprise waiting for him. Hmm. Oh, I smell my favorite. Yummy honey. Oh, I see it. Dripping out of that old tree. Up the tree climbed the hungry bear. He had one thing on his mind, honey. All of a sudden, Musqua felt something on his nose, something sharp. Oh, what was that? Dancing angrily in front of Musqua's nose was young bee. That was me. Go away or I'll call the rest of the bees and give you more of the same. <laughs> That little sting hardly hurt at all. Move aside, insect. I'm coming up. <sighs> and Masqua continued to climb towards the honey. Uh, here comes the rest of those pesky bees. But who cares? They can't stop me. Oh! Oh, oh, what was that? Oh, 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 stop that! Oh, 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 it burns like fire! Oh, I'm going!
Electric bills got you down. Maybe you rent or maybe you own. Maybe you rent or maybe you own. You can live with people or alone. You can live with people or alone. A low heat bill is what you need. A low heat bill is what you need. To help you live within your means. To help you live within your means. You can save energy and still stay warm. Save energy and still stay warm. This energy wrap is to inform. This energy wrap is to inform. Don't freeze in the dark or rant or rave. Don't freeze in the dark or rant or rave. Here's some tips to help you save. Electric heat reduces chill. Electric heat reduces chill. You know that's half your electric bill. You know that's half your electric bill. Keep your heat around 65. Keep your heat around 65. Watch your heat bill take a dive. Watch your heat bill take a dive. Don't use heat all night and all day. Don't use heat all night and all day. Cause what you wear, cause what you pay. Cause what you wear, cause what you pay. If you're cold and your temperature dies. Turn something hot to warm you inside. Seal your windows and your doors. Carpet helps warm up your floors. Weather stripping stops the drafts. Warm air stays in, you block this path. Shades and curtains should all stay closed. Use door space to keep out the cold. Freezing drafts will do without. Or else end up in the poorhouse. Long hot baths make you feel high. Take short showers to rectify. Lower the temp on your water heater. Insulated blankets make things cheaper. Faucets that drip are simple to fix. Repair those leaks, it's easy and quick. Use your brain when you wash clothes. Use cold water to keep the bill low. Turn down the heat if you're not home. Shut off TVs and stereo. Cut off the light when the sun comes out. Conservation, what this is about. Keep oven doors shut while you bake. Close the fridge when you partake. Fill your dishwasher to the max. Conservation hotline has the fact. Upon a time, there was a show about energy conservation, and everyone laughed. They thought, ho, ho, and ha, ha, this does not apply to me. So they went on using electric hair dryers, typewriters, leaving the refrigerator door open until one day, electrical sources became very scarce and very expensive. That was a bad day. From then on, people either had to pay lots of money or work very hard to have electrical funds. This is a story of that day yet to come called Darkness. Nah. I thought you said you knew where it was, man. Stop saying that, man. I'm very jumpy. Big deal, you're jumpy. I'm freezing. Shh, Ooh. listen, someone's coming. Maybe they're carrying quarters. Quarters, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got it, guys. Oh, Come on, man, I've got it. It's down there somewhere. Where is it? Where jump on it, man. Hold it down, man. Hey, stop that. Hey, who are you? 8409, is that you? Of course it is. I told you I'd be here, didn't I? Couldn't have. My communicator has been repossessed. What? Again? You just had that thing reinstalled last week, man. Well, I haven't had the quarters to put in it. Besides, the satellite company doesn't like you to keep them around for wall art, you know. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. Come on, let's go. Hey, did you guys hear about the new hologram they're showing at the video space? No, what's the deal, man? Price is 17 bucks, man. Yeah. Plus two quarters for the machine. Whoa, yeah. what a rip-off. I don't want to hear about it. Come on, let's go. Huh? We're here, I think. Me, me. Yeet. 
Oh, hi, guys. Come on in. You look frozen. Frozen? Oh, you must be three degrees Celsius out here. I can't believe it. Nice place you've got here. Wait. Oh! Whoa! Man, I meant it as a surprise, not to scare you. Jeez. Where'd you get the quarters to afford the ergs? Well, it's my tube day, so I got ten quarters. Ten quarters? Electric! No, we do first. Hey, how about sensor screens? Video games. Let's dance. Cook food. It's your tube day, you choose. Oh, all right, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Choose, choose. I choose dancing. Yes. Okay, let's dance. Oh, wow, they go those lights again. See, I can't stand it. It's all right, I'll use one of mine. I can't. Oh, 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 wait, oh, let's oh, get oh. to the music before the lights go out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. want to hear. Uh, oh, anything, man. I need to dance. I'm freezing. Yeah, anything, anything. Well, would somebody mind manually working the audio video cycle for the music? I mean, I've only got nine quarters left, and they got to last me a whole month. Oh, gee, all right, all right. I, I'll do it, you know, but hey, don't expect much, because I just got through hand-washing five loads of Plastiware, okay? Oh, that's okay. Okay, so what do you guys want to hear, huh? Let's play an oldie. Oh, no, Michael no, Jackson. no, 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 no. Very as antique. Come on, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh. All right, all right, I'll do it, but I'm not starting till you guys are totally for sure ready, okay? Okay. Oh, okay. okay, ready? Yeah. Hit it! This town never used to bring me down. I used to love to drive around. Scenes like this are beginning to make people think that something new is afoot in Seattle. Mixed aged audiences listening to music in an alcohol free environment. But not too long ago, things were very different. The city's once thriving young adult music scene nearly collapsed. Many blame Seattle's teen dance ordinance for its decline. The ordinance was passed more than a decade ago in response to a situation that had gotten out of hand. Here at the corner of Stewart and Boren, a church-owned dance hall called the Monastery courted a mixed-age crowd. It was well known for harboring illegal activities. The selling of drugs, underage drinking and child prostitution. The community was upset. Parents were outraged. And in 1985, the police finally shut it down. The teen dance ordinance made it illegal for clubs catering to adults to allow dancing for minors. But it failed to clearly define what a dance was and provided no distinction between a dance and a concert. The ordinance did require places operating public dances to be licensed. Ironically, a church-operated venue like the monastery would have been exempt. At first, enforcement was sporadic, but eventually clubs offering all ages concerts were routinely harassed or shut down, casting a pall over the once vibrant young adult music scene. The teen dance ordinance has really had a chilling effect upon the all-ages music scene in Seattle because, well, for many reasons. One, the document's very, very difficult to understand. The original teen dance ordinance is just a nine-page document full of legal ease, and so it is very difficult for promoters to understand what is expected of them to abide by the law. The security requirements in the teen dance ordinance have been very cost prohibitive. They require a high degree of police officers, off-duty police officers hired by the promoter to work at all-ages shows. And promoters simply can't afford to do that when they're doing five and six dollar doors for a couple hundred kids. So that has been a big issue. The insurance requirements in the teen dance ordinance, a million dollar policy for all promoters have been cost prohibitive. So those are three of the primary things. And then the major thing is the age restrictions. As a band member specifically, um, it's almost impossible to get all-ages shows in the city. Your options are 
either play a mixed use show, which means playing an early show at a, a bar um, and immersing yourself in an alcohol environment, um, or hoping that by some grace there will be an all ages show for you to play on. In the late 1990s, things began to loosen up. Relaxing of state liquor laws allowed clubs to cater to both those under and over age 21, offering an earlier alcohol-free concert for people of all ages, followed by a later one for the drinking over 21 crowd. Also in the picture were a more sympathetic mayor and new city council members. People committed to improving the situation for everyone. In February of 1999, they created a music and youth task force to help them figure out a lot what of to task do. Task force members don't particularly want to have a dance ordinance, but if we're going to have one, this is what we recommend. Our intent was to bring all the major parties to a single place, a round table, literally, to meet for over a year, as it turns out, to discuss how we can address the, the issue of the teen, dan teen dance ordinance and also make essentially more venues available to youth. We've had amazing numbers of people come to the task force, sit in the audience at the council chambers, kind of watching the task force as it operates. And if you know how dull most council processes and task force processes and things like that can be to sit in the audience and think about teenagers, you'll know that this reflects a real serious commitment and a real concern. Meeting regularly, the task force became a forum for opening up communication among all the parties slowly creating some mutual understanding out of anger and distrust. When we first started out, we had very passionate meetings, um, which I, I welcome, the passion there. Um, but people weren't necessarily hearing each other. And as time went on, we saw more communication happening between promoters and the police and people who were running clubs and our city officials. Um, and I, I believe a certain level of trust that everyone really is there for the same reasons, having the same values. My knowledge has been increased significantly. Um, I, part of being a police officer is going out there and meeting people and meeting your community and getting to know who they, they, they are. And that's one area of the, of the community that I didn't really know. So I, I think I've benefited greatly. I can come to the table and speak in the vernacular of a band member current in Seattle, but the captain of the police department is gonna come and speak a completely different language when talking about the same issue. So now that we've all come to terms, quite literally, I feel as though I have a number of different avenues that I can take. All of us that have worked on the Teen Dance Ordinance for a long time came in here with, with what we thought was how it should be. And we thought this is totally fair and everyone should be happy with this. And we realized really quickly that we didn't know a lot about, about how laws work, about how the cities run, about what police need, about what fire needs. Um, and so we've learned pretty quickly. Um, the harsh, brutal reality of, of the political process. It's been amazing the commitment of the people, both from the city and the people who volunteered and were appointed to be on the Music and Youth Task Force. There have been about a dozen people who have committed so much time and energy to this effort. What I have learned is that it takes a long, long time to change a city ordinance. More than a year after its first meeting, the task force came up with a number of recommendations. Among them, establishing city-owned music venues, repealing the teen dance ordinance, and replacing it with an all-ages dance ordinance, and creating a music and youth commission, whose job in part would be to monitor the new regulations and provide a forum for working through difficult issues. Seattle's current, more youth-friendly environment appears to be having an impact perhaps suggesting a revival of Seattle's teen and young adult music scene. Is it dead or alive? Only time will tell.
know that 40% of all garbage in landfills comes from packaging? Think about it. Consume less now. Recycling one glass bottle saves enough energy to run a 100 watt light bulb for four hours. Recycling one aluminum can saves enough energy to run your television set for three hours. Recycling one newspaper saves enough energy to run your computer for six whole hours. Think about it. What can you do with paper? Hmm. You can wear it. I like the earrings. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat it. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. This is the bomb. can play with it. Aww. Bella, next time. Please recycle! Graffiti's cool, man. Graffiti says, I don't care what my neighborhood looks like, I don't care what your neighborhood looks like. Graffiti's not cool when the fence or building belongs to you. I did do illegal graffiti, but I don't do it no more. I thought it was cool to show off my skills, but I didn't think it said anything bad about someone's neighborhood. Now I'm doing murals, and to me, that's considered artwork. What I do now is art, and I want respect for my art.
The neighborhood's my home. When it looks good, I look good. You have a choice about what you do. potatoes and since you are a person you must hate me too for that I have stolen the remote I'm sorry you feel that way but I don't hate you and you didn't have to steal the remote if you asked you could have watched TV with me <laughs> I thought no human was nice no one was ever nice to me <laughs> I'm so sorry here let me show you the meaning of life Breakfast?
Assignment. Inside that video store is your first victim. Video store clerk? Yes. I want you to go in there and kill him. Why? A master of Sinanju does not eat fatty foods. Because he overcharged me for my rental of Picture Perfect. I've taught you all I can. Now, it's time for you to prove to me that you have learned what I have taught. I want you to go out there and make me a proud master of Shinanju. He does not use a gun. He, he is honorable. He is, he is strong. He, uh, 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 u
That's what you get when you cross Remo Williams. than me and it's really embarrassing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Matt Ludington with this special television broadcast. In the midst of the digital revolution, thousands have found themselves ostracized without equipment or training. need, one organization has stepped forward whose sole mission it is to bring media resources and knowledge to the public at large. 911 provides education, equipment, and a unique screening venue. 911 is a very important organization to me as a filmmaker because it's a visual arts organization with very strong ties to the community. They lend inexpensive editing equipment to everyone. They can start you at the very beginning and they can take you all the way through. The collective um, purpose is to give voice to voices that haven't been heard before.
I learned how to make music videos here, and now I can make music videos in my own spare time and help other people make their own videos too. So, now it's time to say goodbye to our light company. One, two, three, you, you gotta, gotta stay, stay cool away, cool. It's up to you, stay cool away, cool. It's up to you, stay cool, stay cool away, cool. Ba da da da, like a Romeo, or a Juliet, or a lunatic who is in a sweat, but just gotta have another cigarette. You've gotta stay cool away, cool. It's up to you, stay cool. Ba da da da, like a millionaire who has gone insane, burning up his money, burning out his brain, throwing all his cash through the window pane. You gotta stay cool. Ba da 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 da. Baby and navy, hot outside, but you can stay cool. City lighter, honey. Flip off that switch, turn down that stack. You can stay cool without spending all your money. Ba -da -da -da. You try to cut your hair with a bayonet. You grab your blow dryer and you're almost dead. But you plug it in and the socket's wet. You gotta stay cool away, cool. It's up to you. Stay cool away, cool. It's up to you. Stay cool, 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 stay cool. It's up to you. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. It's up to you. It's up to you.